So this is a very interesting and a very big challenge as well for many developing markets which have not been able to capture or catch up with the advances made in more sophisticated economies when it comes to the third industrial revolution. But a good example for Philippines could be Vietnam, which has uh, secured a lot of investments in manufacturing related to the fourth industrial revolution in the last few years. And in that case, we see that much of the innovation is not just coming from the internal ecosystem, but is being brought over by foreign companies into their countries. So whether it be use of IoT, sensors, 5G solutions, is the companies from Japan, China and Taiwan, which are bringing over these solutions in applying this in the Vietnamese context in their factories. But at the same time, Vietnam has these fundamentals in place, which is stability, more certainty, and a very skilled and educated workforce, uh, which are the sort of founding principles for any economy to succeed. So in a way, I believe that Philippines can also follow that trajectory and invest in skills, invest in infrastructure. And once that foundation is set, it can actually bypass some of the limitations and overcome some of the challenges which it had during the third industrial revolution and leapfrog into the fourth industrial context. Specifically, I think for electronics, airport, uh, aircraft components, as well as automotive components, there is an opportunity for Philippines to capture market share given the trade wars that we're seeing between US and China and also the challenges uh, of capacity maybe in Vietnam and Indonesia and so on. One of the uh, predictions that I would like to make about uh, emerging technologies and changing uh, the world in a way different from what we know would be the disappearance of meat eating and uh, I believe that um, lab-grown meat as well as plant-based proteins will eliminate almost all the slaughterhouses that we see around the world today by 2030. One of the things that we tried to highlight in my presentation was that uh, even though a lot of innovation today is coming from the startups, is the larger organizations still which are able to uh, sort of acquire these innovations from the startups or partnering with them and what we are seeing, unfortunately, is that uh, the level of competition around the world is reducing rather than increasing, despite all the talk of disruption that we have. And in that context, it is important for regulators and for policymakers to make sure that they have competition policies which move ahead with times and prevent cornering of the market which is being created through these digital technologies with the same old players and making the consumer and the society lose out in the long term.